Hello and welcome to Algebra. Today we're going to be looking at 7-2. We're going to continue with that lesson and we're going to finish that off today. We're going to include some scientific notation. Okay, so something you need to understand about scientific notation. Scientific notation, you're going to have two numbers and you'll have the old style multiplication x. The first term uh, or the first uh, factor is going to have to be um, a one-digit number. So you may have two and three tenths, you may have four and nine hundred and sixteenths, but it has to be, uh, you know, between one and ten. An absolute value has to be between one and ten. Uh, so the other part of it is that you need to understand that as you move the decimal place left and right, um, I like to think of it as a little magnet, and it's either going to go left and up or right and down. So <clears throat> those little magnets are either going to attract or they're going to repel. So just two things to keep in mind. If you don't understand those, and the rest won't make much sense. So we only have one example to work on today. Uh, each square inch of your body has about 6.5 times 10 to the second pores. Suppose the back of your hand has an area of about 12 hundredths times 10 to the second square inches. About how many pores are in the back of your hand? Write your answer in scientific notation. So what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and write this down. And you can imagine <clears throat> each square inch and then you have total number of square inches. So we're going to multiply these together in this context. Now you remember from our other lessons that we talked about racking them up when you have like bases. And when I mean like bases, for example, look at this, you can kind of notice that the 10, um, the tens there are going to be like bases. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move things around a bit. Because we do not have anything in this area, these parentheses don't really do anything in this context. So I'm going to move everything around. Six and a half times twelve hundredths. times 10 squared times 10 squared. So I've moved things around a bit. I've commuted, um, used associative and commutative properties of multiplication to shift things around a bit. And now that I have these, I'm going to go ahead and multiply. 6 and a half times 1 and 2 tenths. Go ahead and work that out. We end up with 78 hundredths. And 78 hundredths times, this is where we rack them up. We have like bases. 10 is the base. And there's two pool balls and then two more pool balls. And that's going to be a total of four. And when we look at this, this cannot be the right answer because back when we looked at the scientific notation, A, that factor has to be a one-digit number. So you have to have one digit and then your decimal. If you look at our answer right now, we have nothing in front of the decimal. We do have zero, but zero doesn't count. You have to have a non-zero um, uh, number in front of the decimal, one to the left. So we're just going to move this decimal. We're going to move it to the right one time. Well, remember the arrows, it either goes to the right and down. Think of your little magnet there. Uh, or left and up. So this is going to go to the right, this, this pair right here, to the right and down. So move it once to the right, 7 and 8 tenths. And you think about this like a building. When you're on the fourth floor and you go down one floor, you're now on the third floor. So 7 and 8 tenths times 10 to the third. Now anytime we ask in words, we need to answer in words. If you start with a real life context, you need to go back and apply it to that context. Well, they ask how many pores are on the back of your hand? Well, we're going to say there are about seven and eight tenths times ten cubed pores on 
the back of your hand. So anytime we have a word problem, first we look at the question. About how many pores are there on the back of your hand? Did we answer the question? Yes, we did. There are about 7 and 8 tenths times 10 to the third pores on the back of your hand. I'm just going to go ahead and box this in, or you could circle it, just so that the reader can understand very clearly what's going on. And that'll do it for today, and that is the last part of Lesson 7-2.